Hey, Milestone Church, so excited to be with you on this 4th of July weekend. And right off the bat, as you can tell, things look a little bit different. And I'm going to be preaching this weekend at our Keller campus, and it's going to be the same message. But for online, we wanted to do something special to where I could look directly in the camera the entire time, talk a little bit about my role as online campus pastor, and really talk about Milestone Church, my journey here, and something I believe is really going to encourage you and bless you today. So if we haven't had the chance to meet yet, my name is Luke. Again, I'm an online campus pastor. I grew up at Milestone Church with my wife, Sam, and, and we met Sam and I at 16 years old, and you'll see our three kids. We have Winslet, who is our oldest child, and she's the typical just oldest kid, really responsible. And our middle kid, Callahan, he's a lot like my wife. He's, he's detail-oriented. He's super competitive. And then Savoy, our youngest kid, if you have three kids, you know who sent you. Where are you from? <laughs> she's nothing like either of us. I asked her the other day, I was like, Savoy, do you think that you know more than daddy? And she just, with all confidence, yes. <laughs> and so Never in doubt, and uh, she's amazing, and so, so blessed. We grew up here again. My wife and I, Sam, met at Elevate's first retreat. I was actually the first student here at Milestone Church, and what I'm talking about today is, is way more than just a, a slogan or something, but this is really the story of my life. And so a quick funny story, uh, I had my, my kids by myself for a few days, and if you're a dad, you know what that's like. And so my wife was out of town. She was traveling, and Thursday, uh, my younger kids are at school, and Winslet, my oldest, is sick, and so she was at home, all right, and, and, and I took care of her. The next day, on Friday, my, my younger kids don't have school, and so we're going about the day, and you know, I'm just like, hey, forage for your own food, moldy cheese stick, that's great, you can eat that. It's just typical dad stuff if, if, if you're caring for the kids. My wife's like, how's it going? I'm like, oh, it's great, you know, they're, they're up past their bedtime, whatever. Well, about noon comes around, and my oldest daughter, Winslet, comes up to me and she's like, Daddy, why didn't you take me to school today? <laughs> and I totally forgot. I didn't even realize that she had school and I just let her stay home the entire day. And I was like, why did you wait until noon to tell me you didn't have school? So it was so funny. And Sam was like, how's it going? I was like, well, I kind of forgot to take our daughter to school today. You know, I just didn't, didn't think about it. So absolutely funny. But um, that's a little bit about, about my family, and I'm excited I'm going to share some more of that today. But if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Luke chapter 7. We're going to be looking at Luke chapter 7 in just a little bit. But again, this, this message is special because we're talking just directly, I'm talking to the online audience today. And so maybe you attend Keller, has a McKinney, and you're traveling. I know we have a lot of people traveling, but maybe it's your first time here at Milestone Church. And here's my heart today, is that you really see what Milestone Church is about. And today you really get a picture of, of God's heart for people and how that expresses itself at Milestone. A few of my favorite online stories, one of them is Mitchell. Mitchell started uh, watching online from out of state and watched online for multiple months. And you know, we'll have text prompts like, hey, text connect, we wanna help you get connected or get information. And he's like, no, nah, I didn't really wanna do any of that. He's like, I just kinda watched online at a distance. And you know, maybe that's you right now, you're watching online, maybe you're in your PJs or you're you know, smoking a brisket for the, for the holiday, you know, that's okay, this is online church. You can be sitting there in your PJs, put your hand on the screen, I'll pray for you, receive that power. But Mitchell, he was watching like that for months. And then he, he felt called actually to move, to be a part of Milestone Church in Dallas-Fort Worth. And so he moved to DFW and started attending in person. And now Mitchell, he was so impacted by the online environment, so impacted about, by, by what God was doing through that, that he actually serves on our team now as well as online. And there's so many stories like that. People, I can, I can think of Debbie who lives in California and, and her and her family watched online before her kids moved to the area. And now her kids attend the Keller campus and she's a part of our online campuses. And so, at, excuse me, they attend our Hazlitt campus, but absolutely incredible really what God does through this. And so my prayer again today is for you to get a picture of God's heart for people and how that expresses itself through online. And so maybe you're new today, and you're wondering, hey, what, what drives Milestone Church? Well, let me tell you, it's not to, to be baffled by information. We're not trying to be the flashiest church or the coolest church. Really, we're trying to be the church that shows God's heart for people. And how does that express itself? Well, if you've ever been on campus or even online, you can see how people love and serve one another. How people park cars or greet and chat. How people take prayer requests when you text in prayer and our, and our people are praying for you over, over the phone or, or getting seated or ushered into a seat or our children's ministry. Anytime somebody steps in Milestone Church or hopefully watches online, they think this, man, this place is so friendly. 
And we hear that all the time. This place is such a friendly church. How does that happen? Well, really, it's not just being friendly. It's God's heart for people. Because whenever we get God's heart and see people, how God sees them, something changes. It changes how we interact with people. It changes how we, how we view people, uh, how we value people. And I think the best example of this really is Jesus, because how Jesus interacted with people throughout Scripture was incredible. It was so countercultural. Jesus would talk to the up and out. He would talk to the down and out. And he was always going after people. That was his heart. He never pushed anybody away, but he always let people come to him, ask questions, have doubts. And really, when you come into Milestone Church, our prayer is this, that you get a picture at God's heart for other people. Because the premise that I want to talk about today, and again, it's more than a slogan. This is really the story of my life, and I'm going to share some more about that. But it's this, that people matter to God, that people matter to God. That God loves humanity so much that when he created humanity, the Bible says in Genesis that we were made in his image. And because of that, people, humanity has intrinsic value. And, And you may think, yeah, I understand that people are valuable to God. How does that play out? Well, it's so practical and we're gonna get practical today, but let's look at this right now in 1 John 4, 9. And then verse 19, 1 John 4, 9, it says this, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. God said, hey, I'm not just gonna talk to you about love, I'm gonna demonstrate my love for people. I'm gonna demonstrate my love for my creation by sending my son. And then through that relationship that Jesus makes possible with God, he says that now we might live through God. And so when you step on campus or sign into chat, my prayer is this, that you experience a picture of God's love by how we serve other people. 1 John 4, 19 says this, we love because he first loved us. You know, it's such a unique role uh, working online. I grew up doing student ministry for many years, and I was, I was, again, the first student at Elevate, first student at Milestone Church. And so I was a young, very impressionable very broken background, and I show up as this person, and I can immediately tell something was different. I remember thinking like, man, this is the first time I've seen real Christians, people who aren't like weird or strange, but people that just love me and and I can look up to. So it's really my heart. Anytime anybody watches online, you watch a message or you watch me uh, set set up the message or Pastor Jeff, my prayer and heart is always this, that you get a picture of God's love for you. Even if it's somebody just scrolling through and they're on here for three minutes watching, I'm like, God, would you please show them how much you love them? Would you transcend the camera and technology? And I know COVID changed a lot of that. We're probably used to a little more digital content consuming, but I wanted to go beyond that. I, I say this, hey, we, we need to love people. You know, people matter to God and we get that, but let me be the first to say, it can be really challenging at times to love people, okay? I, my wife knows if somebody cuts me off in traffic, she's immediately like, please don't, Luke, please don't. And I, I, I struggle at times to, to love people because let's be, cha- let's be honest, it's challenging at times. And there's some real barriers. This picture on the screen right now, shopping cart, and I think this is a great litmus test, really, uh, of how people, because sometimes we can rank people, you know, like, oh, they're bad or they're good or whatever. The, the shopping cart is the great equalizer. Because let me explain this. The shopping cart is something that, you know, we, we all know that after we get our groceries loaded into our car, that we technically should return the shopping cart, right? We should return it. Uh, but many of us don't do it. And if you're feeling condemned right now, I'm okay with that because I want you to feel a little condemned because listen to this, the shopping cart, while it's not illegal to leave it out, we know that it's, it's, uh, it's a negative. You ever try to park your car, pull into a spot and there's a shopping cart there? It's a pain, okay? Or you like leave it out in the middle of the parking lot, stranded, the wind takes it, smash into somebody's car. Not the greatest idea. So the shopping cart though is, is, is a great litmus test. Like are we going to return the shopping cart? Are we gonna leave it? Are we gonna let somebody else return it? And so. I always judge a little bit when I see somebody load their groceries into their car and then leave their shopping cart. So I know, I know that's a silly illustration, but at times it can be challenging really to to get God's heart for people. Maybe it's somebody that you disagree with. Maybe it's somebody that has a different political belief or different background or or whatever it may be. You, you, You see things differently. And so the challenge and really the barrier that many have experienced is it's it's countercultural to love everyone regardless of what they believe. And I know the first instance, many of us want to get online and argue and, and, and post our point and be right. And while you may be right, that may not be God's heart 
for other people. That may not be the best way to love other people. And so even when I see somebody with a shopping cart thing, I'm thinking, you know what? I can still love that person from a distance. And I want to show really in in the Bible here in Luke chapter 7, one of the best pictures of God's heart. Because there's the barriers of all of those things, but Jesus exemplified how countercultural it was to love everybody. So go ahead and turn to Luke chapter 7. I'm going to summarize for the sake of time, starting in verse 36, and then we'll pick up at verse 44. And so in this story, Jesus, he goes to a Pharisee's house. And a Pharisee is, is a religious leader. And it was really interesting at the time because these guys were trying to test Jesus and maybe trap Jesus. And so he goes to this Pharisee's house. And this Pharisee is supposedly this big religious figure. There is hundreds and hundreds of laws, mosaic laws, that the Pharisees carried out to a T. And they even had laws to, to describe laws. And so then all of this thing, uh, all of these laws, he's trying to follow. And I'm married to a, to a CPA, you know, and she studied audit at University of Texas. And so hey, maybe this guy got a little audit spirit on him. You know, this is right, this is wrong. And so he, Jesus comes to this guy's house, though, to have dinner with him. And and the the interesting thing was, while he followed all these laws, the motivation didn't matter. It was a little legalistic, like right and wrong. And so what happens is somebody crashes the party, Jesus is there eating, and this woman shows up. And the woman, they said, she's known in the community to be a sinful woman, to live a sinful life. And that's so bold for this woman to show up there. And what she does is even more bold. and, And it's absolutely incredible. The Bible says that she has an alabaster jar of expensive perfume. And she says that the woman walks in and breaks the perfume jar and weeping starts washing Jesus' feet with her hair and starts kissing his feet and anointing him with this alabaster jar. And the entire time she's weeping. And uh, I can imagine that, that Pharisee sitting there, the, the, the right, you know, upstanding person who has it all together and follows all the laws, and he's seeing this happen, and I, just to be honest, that, that would be a little weird. Like, that's pretty out there, that level of worship. But here's the deal. We can never judge somebody on how they worship. We don't know what they've been through, and we don't know what this woman has been through. And so she goes, and she says, Jesus, I, I, I value you. I'm going to take what's most valuable to me and break this, this jar, and she's weeping at his feet. And what's so interesting is, is Jesus is, is allowing this to happen. The Pharisee, he, he thinks in his mind, this is verse 39, and he says, if, if this guy was really a prophet, this Jesus guy knew what type of woman that she was, he wouldn't allow this to happen because she is a sinner. And I love that Jesus, who is, it's so countercultural, he allows himself to be close, not just again to the religious leader, but to the woman who's a sinner. And I can just imagine her, her, her remorse maybe from her lifestyle or the guilt and the shame maybe that she's carried in there and the things that she's done, the things that she's experienced. And she gets before the Messiah, the God, the incarnate, the walking flesh God, and she's weeping and she's washing his feet. And it's really countercultural here because, again, it's, it's customary when, when somebody goes into a house in that time and age, you would have a servant to wash their feet because they're walking around with sandals, they have dirty feet. And, and Simon, he didn't do that. He was a rude host. And he didn't, he didn't greet him with a, with a brotherly kiss on, on the cheeks, which was normal. He didn't anoint his head with oil, which is normal. Yet the woman did all of this. And so Jesus is seeing what this man is thinking. And Jesus is seeing his heart for people. He's seeing this woman in her pain and her brokenness. And he tells Simon a quick illustration about two men who had a debt. He said, one man had a debt of 50 silver coins, which would be like 50 days work. And the other had a debt of 500, which would be 500 days. And and Jesus is telling this story to the Pharisee, Simon. And he says, Simon, which of these men, they were forgiven both of their debt, completely wiped out the 50 and the 500, the big debt. He said, which of these would be more thankful? And Simon responds correctly. He says, I suppose the one with a bigger debt. And I want to pick up now in verse 44. Again, if you have your Bible, you can go ahead and take a look at that. Verse 44 says this, You've judged correctly. He turned to the woman and said, Do you see this woman? I came into your house, and you did not give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not pour oil on my head, but she's poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, Her many sins have been forgiven as her great love has shown, but whoever has been forgiven little loves little. And then he turns to the woman and and says that your sins have been forgiven and sends her on your way. 
And I love this story because really, again, what are we talking about? God's heart for people, how God loves people, the down and out, the up and out. And in this story, this woman, we don't know what she's been through. And she just gave one of the most radical examples of worship, breaking something valuable to her, pouring that out onto Jesus, weeping at his feet, being so bold as to walk into the Pharisee's house because she had to get with Jesus. She saw the value in Jesus. And out of that, Jesus didn't say, get away from me. He didn't, he didn't push her away or I know what kind of woman you are, a sinner. He didn't do any of that. He loved her where she was at. And what I think is so great, her revelation of who God was, it didn't just lead to some good moral principles. It didn't just lead to Jesus being a good teacher in her life or some things that she could apply to make her life better. No, she walked away forgiven, her sins forgiven. The Bible says that when we come to know Jesus, that we're actually a new creation, that the old has passed away and the new has come. And I wanna make this really practical today. What happens when we see people like God does? How do we love like Jesus? Well, the first thing is number one, we need to personally respond to God's love. I love the Bible says in Romans 2, 4 that it's God's kindness that leads us to repentance. That it's the kindness of God, it's Jesus' posture in this place where Jesus says, hey, I know you're a sinner. He knows everything about us, our background, everything that we've done, everything that we, do, that we will do. And still in that moment and in that posture, he loves us, he accepts us, and he, he takes us as we are. I love this woman again, poured out what was valuable to her onto Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus, that God demonstrated his love by sending Jesus. That God saw humanity, saw the intrinsic value, and saw that sin had separated us from God. And so he said, you know what? I'm going to send what's most valuable to me, my son Jesus, who will then pour out his life as a sin offering so that now we can be in relationship with God and experience a life that we don't deserve. So whenever we experience God's love, it goes beyond just us. It goes beyond just thinking, man, this is, this is unique, like what's happening here? It's really this life-altering thing that happens. If you've come to know Jesus, your life should look radically different, and as we take steps and grow, that does happen. So the first thing, again, how we love like Jesus, we personally have to accept and respond to his love, that free gift of salvation. The second thing is this, we see people's value. And I value a lot of things. We all have values. Maybe you have hobbies, things that you're doing right now that, that you value. You know what I really value? I value food, okay? And, 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 and just to be honest, people, you know, why, why do you work out? I don't work out, you know, for, for health reasons. I'm, I'm gonna be a little vulnerable. I work out so I can eat more unhealthy food, all right? Just being completely honest. Like, yes, we're opening space at our Keller campus. Torchy's Tacos is also opening more space in Alliance. I'm excited about that. I get excited about food. We get excited about value. I love this story of Blockbuster and Netflix. If you guys remember right now on the screen, you'll see this. I remember being able to walk on a Friday night into Blockbuster Video. Yes, this dates me. But how excited I was when a new release was out. And you'd walk over to the wall, and the, and the worst thing that would happen you would, you would see all the, all the empty slots and you would see the movie wasn't available. And you'd go through and you'd check and make sure there was no VHS behind it or DVD. And then you'd walk up to the front desk and ask and the best thing was somebody had just returned that VHS and you could get that Be Kind Rewind. So what's interesting about Blockbuster, Blockbuster back in the day, they actually in 2000, um, were, were approached by an upstart, by a company that was uh, renting DVDs through the mail, and the company was known as Netflix. And Netflix wanted to sell the Blockbuster for $50 million. And what's so interesting in that time in 2000, Blockbuster, the execs actually laughed Netflix out of the room. They're like, hey, we don't need that. People are coming in our Blockbuster. You know, they didn't see the value in what Netflix was doing and the technology that Netflix was working on, those things. And so they laughed them out of the room. Well, if you know the story today, why don't you try to go to a Blockbuster right around the corner? It ain't going to happen. I think there was like one pop-up that people went to. But Netflix is valued now at over $180 billion. There's something unique that happens when we see the value in something. And it's as much as we can value money, wow, $180 billion, people are infinitely more valuable. And they're infinitely more valuable to Jesus. Really, it's this. If people matter to God, they should matter to us. If, if God loved people enough to send his son Jesus, if he loved this woman enough in Luke chapter 7 to allow anybody from any background 
to come into, into his presence and not shoo them away and not condemn them because God never condemns us, but it's loving kindness that leads us to repentance, that draws us into him, then we should see people out of the same lens. And, and I, I think it's so interesting because he gave this woman a title and I can look back on my life and, and have many, many titles as things has happened. And, and the Pharisee called this woman a sinner. But Jesus says, you know what, I'm seeing beyond your title. So whether that's, you know, outcast or, or whatever title you may give yourself, unlovable, uh, whatever that may be, God sees beyond that title because he sees value. And the third thing is this, we reflect God's love. And really that's the truth. Whenever we experience God's love, that, that it's more than just something that we can keep to ourselves. And that's why I love Milestone Church is because every time that you greet, every time that you smile at somebody, every time you pray, every time you give, every time you love somebody, you're showing and reflecting God's love for people. And it's so countercultural. Our, our culture is not gonna be healed by arguing on the internet. Our culture is not gonna be healed by division, but God's love really is the answer for every problem plaguing our culture. Because what God's love does, it transcends everything. Because God loves us exactly where we're at. And really, this isn't, again, this isn't just a principle. This is the story of my life. I walked into Milestone Church as a young person. And you see me now as, as, as a campus pastor preaching. I was the last person who should have been in ministry. I was the last person who should have uh, been been done something great for God because I not only saw myself so differently, but my background was extremely broken. My parents divorced at a young age, and I remember living with my mom uh, until sixth grade. And in that time period, I think I moved eight or nine times, and my mom was addicted to drugs and alcohol. And well, this story, Luke 7, is so powerful to me because I read that story and I see my mom. I see my mom who was a sinner, somebody who was very far from God, and God just radically changed her life. I remember I was in sixth grade, and this is years of being around parties and drugs and alcohol. My life was absolute chaos. I did not have a relationship with my father, really. I would see him occasionally. My life was aimless and hopeless. And I remember in sixth grade, my mom tried to take her own life. And I get home with my sister, and my mom is not there, and we're wondering what's going to happen. And really, it was God's starting something. Because my mom would go to a rehabilitation center in Abilene, Texas, where Pastor Jeff Little was preaching, was, was leading a church at that time before Milestone. And, and I remember my mom got radically saved and became radically in love with Jesus. And the first time I saw my mom months down the road after that whole, all took place, uh, I, I didn't recognize her. I, was, I remember thinking, who is this woman? I don't recognize a smile. I don't recognize any of that. And it was God's incredible love that had changed her. And what God started to do in that process, well, again, Milestone Church planted in Keller. I was living in Flower Mound. I was going to middle school and high school there. And I started to attend Milestone Church as the first student because my mom was a part of the church plant. And I remember coming in as a, as a kid wearing skinny jeans well before they were cool. Shouldn't have been skinny jeans. Uh, you know you know what happens if you wear something before it's cool? It's not cool. It's weird. And so I, I came in with blonde hair and pink shoes and skinny jeans and, and just really no direction for my life. And these guys, these pastors and leaders saw something in me. And they started loving me. And they started encouraging me. And they started telling me that God had a plan for my life. And I remember through that process really coming to know Jesus and really giving my life to God and really starting to live for him. And even at that young age, I had no idea what God would do. And I would meet my wife, Sam, at 16, and, and we were just 16-year-olds, and, and we, we started dating. And, and still, I had no idea that God had something so great and so amazing planned if I would just keep following him. And so through that process of growing up here, I made a lot of mistakes, and I had a lot of time, a lot of hard love. Again, I didn't have a dad to really show me what it meant to be a husband, what it meant to be a Christ follower or a leader or a man of God. And time after time, Pastor Jeff, Pastor Tyron, Pastor Jed, all these leaders and, and people like you in the church believed in me. And they, and they kept saying, you matter to God. Because God loves people, you matter to God, Luke. And through that process, I would, I would come to know God and grow. And what's absolutely incredible, I, you'll see on the, on the screen now, Pastor Tyron, who's, who's our, one of our next-gen pastors, he was my student pastor for many, many years. He married my wife and I. And he taught me what it meant to be, to be a husband. I remember I had the opportunity to write him a letter and talked about how the first 15 years of my life, I became like my father, my earthly father. And the, in the second 15 years of my life, he modeled what it meant to be a dad to me and what it meant to be a man of God. 
And he showed me that people mattered so much to God because he invested in me. And I, in turn, had the chance to invest in students for years and years in student ministry. And it didn't stop there because uh, we had our daughter, Winslet, our eldest daughter. She was born premature, one pound, 12 ounces. And it was an absolute miracle that she survived and is totally healthy. And so many of you spiritual families surrounded us and believed God with us and kept with us in faith. And then just a few weeks ago, as God's working on my story and journey, working on my daughter, it's absolutely insane to think that, that how I grew up with all the chaos, that my kids are growing up in an environment where they can see people matter to God because they see it through you. And so we had the opportunity just a few weeks ago to do this. Check this video out. It's so much fun to get baptized. I'm a little scared, but it's going to be so happy because Jesus is going to be with me every day. And last up here, we have Winnie Winslet, newbie, who is my oldest daughter. And uh, I'm just so, so proud of you, Winnie, the way that you love God. Winnie was born one pound, 12 ounces and just absolute miracle. I had so many of y'all praying for her and um, just God's hand has been all over her life. And so the way that you love God, Winnie, I'm so proud of you, it's such a big step and God is just doing something in you. And Daddy loves you. So let me ask you this, do you fully commit to following Jesus the rest of your life? Because of your profession of faith, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That was a special moment for me. I, it doesn't show that, but at the end of the video, Winslet starts crying, just God is so apparently working on her. And I show this story not to highlight my life because this is not about my life. I'm a very imperfect person who has just kept saying yes to God. But because of everything that I've experienced, just like Luke 7, how my mom, a sinner, somebody who was far from God, it came to know God radically, God taking care of my family and then really doing above anything I could have imagined with my life, with my kids. And that's a product of this environment. That's Milestone Church. You're watching or you attend Milestone Church. That is my heart for every single person that walks through the door, that they experience God's love through people the same way that I did the same way that my kids will, the same way that I was able to reflect that to, to students for such a long time. And so it's not just my kids, it's your kids. It's your legacy. The legacy that, that my wife and I are creating now, that we're pioneering, that we're gonna honor and love God with everything that we have. God has that same thing for you. And because you matter so much to God, he wants to do something so unique in you. Maybe you know Jesus right now, Maybe just take a moment to reflect on his faithfulness, how good God has been to you, how, how, how God has blessed you, how even to be a part of such a, a, a vibrant church of people who are not perfect but love God and wanna impact our communities and impact the people around us and show God's love. We're so honored and grateful to be able to build the church with you because you're amazing people. And maybe right now you're, you're thinking, man, I don't know that Jesus. That, that Jesus who accepts me as I am, who sees beyond my titles the, of sinner or broken or, or outcast or whatever's happening in your life right now, Jesus does see you and he does have a plan. And the Bible says that if you simply trust your life with Jesus, you say you admit to being a sinner and you, you, you say, God, forgive me of my sins, come into my life, be my Lord and Savior. Maybe right now on the screen, through the, through the other side of the screen right now, maybe you pray that with me. God. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sin, come into my life. Make me a new creation, God. Let me reflect your love. If you prayed that prayer, you're feeling God moving on you, there's a phone number on the screen right now. You could text Meet Jesus to that number. Our team would love to pray with you, love to help you on that journey. Maybe that's getting you into our growth track environment at one of our campuses, taking the next step of getting baptized or even connected online or online campus. If you haven't yet, I would love to know where you're watching from and who you are, taking that step out of online anonymity into what God is doing. And so as we close today, I wanna just pray, pray for us and so thankful to be able to really share my story, but share God's heart for you. So God, thank you so much for every person on the other side of the screen, God. I pray that you would reveal your love to them, God, that you would show up in their lives, God. I pray for everybody that's broken or, or experiencing a situation that's painful and challenging, God, that you would show them your love and show them your plan for them. We love you, we pray this in Jesus' name, amen.